Howdy and welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to apply for the Youth Livestock Scholarship. First things first, you'll head to bigtechs.com scholarship and it will take you to this page. Then you're going to scroll down and you'll click the first button that says apply for a new scholarship. This will take you to the application portal where you'll create an account to start your application. So we're going to click sign up. I'm going to create a new account. Be sure to use an email that you check regularly and a password that meets all the requirements, but know that you can always reset it if you need to. So now once we click sign up, it's gonna take us to this page and we'll click create a profile to get started. First, it's gonna prompt you with this question. One of our requirements to apply for our scholarship is that you must attend a Texas college or university or trade school. So if you already know for sure you're going to do that, click yes. If you're not, click no, and it will prompt you to exit the application. If you're not sure yet because you're considering both Texas schools as well as out-of-state schools, that's okay. As long as you're considering one Texas school, you can click yes and decide later. So you'll start by filling out some general information. Be sure again to use an email address that you check often and you'll have access to after graduating high school. Your address, I'm gonna put affairs. You'll select your county from this drop down menu, as well as Texas. We have some more drop downs for you. And then your birthday. Okay, so you can either save a draft or go ahead and create a profile, but know you can always come back to this page and edit or update any of the information. So now that we've created our profile, we are going to click this get started card. And that will take us to this page where you see both the application and letter of recommendation. So we'll start with the application by clicking open. And it brings us here where the bulk of the questions are. Up at the top, you'll see a reminder of all the different opportunities that we offer. Today, I'll be walking you through how to apply for the Big Tech's Youth Livestock Scholarship. So the first question you'll select, Youth Livestock. It's gonna ask you if you've competed in any of our State Fair of Texas Youth Livestock events. Yes. If you say no, it will prompt you to exit the application as well because you are not eligible for this opportunity. So the first question you'll see is what events have you participated in? So there's a full list here of all of the eligible competitions. You can select one or you can hit shift and control and select a few. So I'm going to select those three. Then I'm going to go ahead and say I've competed in three events. And now that will give me three boxes to enter. Okay, so I said I've competed in the Youth Dairy Cattle Show. So I've done that for, let's see, two years. So I'll put a two, a comma, just like it says in the example. And then I'm gonna head to the next one. I said Youth Dairy Cattle Showmanship. And I've competed in that for six years. So again, I follow the format and the example. And finally, I'm going to do the last one that I've participated in, the Youth Dairy Goat Show. And I only did that for one year. So now we've got all of our participation information and we'll move on to the essay. So this is 300 words or less. You're welcome to type it directly in this text box or you can work on it outside of this application in a Word document and really edit it and share it with teachers or counselors to review it and then copy and paste it back into here. It's really up to you. You can always put a placeholder here and then go down and click save draft. Always make sure you're clicking save draft so that you don't lose any of your work or information. Okay, so now we'll move on to high school information. It asks you your cumulative GPA. This number needs to match what is on your transcript. 
You can use your unweighted or weighted GPA, whichever represents you in the best light. So I'm going to say that I have a weighted GPA that's actually a 4.1. And if you have a transcript that is maybe, say, right now in the fall, but you would like to upload a more recent one when it gets closer to the deadline in February 1st, then you can come back here and upload that and change this from any time before the deadline. Now we'll enter the total number of students in our graduating class. And if you're homeschooled, don't worry, you can just go ahead and put one, <laughs> and then you would obviously be one. But let's go ahead and say for the sake of this that there are 50 students in my class and I'm actually 24. Then you'll move on to uploading your transcript. This needs to be a PDF document. You'll click select a file. I'm just gonna select the random PDF and then you'll upload that here. And like I said, you can always come back and upload a more recent one if you improve your GPA or rank for that matter. So now we'll type our high school name, I'll type mine. And then your high school phone number, I'm just gonna go ahead and type my phone number in, but you can Google that. Your principal's name, I'm gonna type my own, but of course you can Google that as well, but I'm sure you already know. And now you'll hit college information. So let's go ahead and select our top choice of Texas school. So I'm gonna say Mountain View College. Have you been accepted yet? I have not been accepted yet. So now we're gonna select our intended major. It's okay if you don't know this yet. It's also okay if none of these match exactly what you're going to do. I'm just gonna say biology. Now we're moving on to household information. The first thing listed on here is the EFC, your expected family contribution. Make sure that you've already filled out your FAFSA, otherwise you won't have this information yet to submit. Your EFC will be a number listed on your student aid report that could be anything from zero to a random number like 7,423. So we'll put in that EFC number and match it to our student aid report. And then we'll move on to the parent or guardian question. So you can select multiple on this as well. For me, it would just be my mother, but if I wanted to select more than one, I would click control and I would select a second one. So you can select whatever applies for you. And then you'll move on to parent or guardian one occupation. So there's two slots for occupations. You can, these are optional. So you can either list their jobs or you can leave them blank if they're unemployed or don't work or you have special circumstances and you're living on your own, obviously this would not apply. So I'll go ahead and enter one occupation and then we'll move on to total number of dependents reliant on your parent or guardian. You can ask your parent or guardian how many dependents they have. They should know this number from their taxes or you can know it basically by the example of, let's say I have two younger siblings. So in that case, I would count my two younger siblings and myself. Do not include your parents on this number. So for that specific example, the number would be three dependents. Moving on, you'll upload a copy of your FAFSA student aid report. Again, this will be a PDF you can download. If you need help, you can ask your parent or guardian or counselor and someone should be able to help you with that. Okay, and then you'll have your test scores, your SAT or ACT test scores. This year for the Big Tech Scholarship Program, we have implemented a test optional policy. This means because of COVID-19, we understand that access to the test has not been as easy as it has in prior years. We also understand that a lot of Texas schools are making test scores optional this year. So it is up to you if you would like to upload your SAT or ACT scores. If you are unable to take them or didn't have to take them for your college, that's okay. These are not required, like I said, you do not need to upload anything here. It's up to you and it will not be included in the formal scoring process. If you do upload, it will just be used to understand your overall academic performance. Now moving on, you'll see another text box to list any awards you may have received in addition to involvement in activities, volunteering, anything like that. So again, you can work on this outside of the application or you can type it directly here. I'm gonna put another placeholder and come back to that. Okay, so now we'll list any other scholarships we may have won and the amount that they are. If we don't have any, we'll just type in A. Let's say that we have the best student scholarship. 
and that is worth 2000 per semester. Let's say we also got the awesome athlete. And that is going to be a $6,000 per semester. Or let's, let's make that total award. So here you can see the different ways that you could structure other scholarships or aid that you have received. And then the final question will be uploading an employment resume. If you already have one, click yes, and then you'll upload a file. If you don't, click no, and then you'll just type in any work experience you might have, or you can type in a if that does not apply to you. So as always, you can click save as a draft if you're not finished with this and you wanna come back and work on it, or you can go ahead and mark it as complete. And that will take you back to this page and you'll see this has changed to complete. If you decide, like I mentioned, you wanna upload a new transcript or your GPA has changed, you can always click edit. You can come back and adjust. Let's say my rank is now 20. And so then I'll scroll down and I'll save my changes. You can change your application up until the deadline, which is February 1st. So now we're back at this home page, and let's look at the letter of recommendation. We'll click open here. You're required to submit one letter of recommendation, but you are allowed to ask for two as well. So let's go ahead and click new request. And we will ask our recommender in this form. So I'm going to ask my boss to submit a letter of recommendation on my behalf. It's always nice if you ask your recommender before you submit this so that they're aware that it's coming and you can make sure that they have the bandwidth to complete this for you. So I've already asked Carissa, can I ask her for a letter of recommendation? She said, absolutely. So I will click our relationship. This can really be anyone who knows you best, whether it's your agent or your teacher or a counselor or even a mentor, you can really select whoever you think can write the best letter of recommendation for you. So then you'll select the years they've known you, the organization they're with, their title or job. And then here's an opportunity for you to remind them or send a note to them. So I'm gonna say, hi, Carissa. I mentioned sending you this recommendation. Would you mind filling it out for me before February 1st? Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Oh, make sure we don't spell anything incorrectly here. Okay, so now I have a note that Carissa will receive when I send her this. So we can either save it as a draft and come back to it, say we don't have her email yet and we need to get that, or we can go ahead and send it. So now that we've sent it, this screen will show up. So it shows that we've sent it to her. We can always remind her, but we have to wait 24 hours to do that. Click view, that'll show you exactly what you entered. You can delete it if you've changed your mind and want to ask someone else. And then you can always go back to this home page and it will say complete now that we have sent it to them. So now that we've sent Carissa the letter of recommendation, she will receive an email and she will be prompted to create an account and upload the letter on your behalf. So you will not be uploading anything. She will directly upload the letter herself and we will receive it on our end. So now that you've done the application and the letter of recommendation, you're complete. Again, always log in before February 1st if you want to upload anything additional or change anything, but we will make our selections and notify you in April. If you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to scholarships at bigtext.com or go to the website again, bigtext.com slash scholarships, and that should have any information you might need about our program or how to apply. Thank you so much, and we hope that you'll submit your applications.